Class is in session, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back for another installment of the Rookie's Field Training Guide to Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Back in the first lesson, I, I discussed in passing, I guess you could say, about calling assists and switching between characters. You know, kind of the basics of teamwork. Now, seeing as how UMVC3 is a 3-on-3 team-based team fighter, teamwork is crucial. So, without further ado, let's get down to it. Welcome to round three, the art of the assist. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pick my team like normal, but instead of instead of Spider instead of placing Spider-Man on the team, sorry, I'm actually going to place Chun Li on the team. Uh, yeah, let's go with the alternate outfit. But I'm going to place Chun Li on the team instead of Spider-Man, so that that way we actually have three characters that will basically represent all of the different command types for specials and hyper arts in the game. Speaking of special and hyper arts, have you been practicing with your characters, folks? If not, then feel free to pause this. Take the time to take the time to actually follow up on the homework from last time. But otherwise, let me give you a brief explanation about actually choosing your assists. Now, as I mentioned, calling out your assist by default is done with the L1 and R1 buttons on the PS3 or the left bumper and right bumper on the Xbox 360. And you can actually choose which of your character's special attacks they do when called out as an assist. This is where familiarizing yourself with your character's special attacks is actually going to become really important. Because if you know what special attack they'll do, you'll know how to follow up and how to cover them as they assist you as well. So let's go ahead and with Chun-Li pick the quite famous and pretty, uh, what's the word? Ubiquitous thousand leg burst. Let's see, now for Ryu, we'll have him in the blue and gold again. And have his... Uh, yeah, we'll use the Tatsumaki assist. And then of course we bring back in the man, the myth, the muscles, the mustache. Good old Hagar. Let's go ahead and get this started. There can be only one winner. If you or die, fight. All right. If you noticed where the life bars were near the top, a small message flashed right at the start of the match that said "Assist OK." When you see that on the life bars, that's when you know that you'll actually be able to call out your assist partner again. So, you know, you can't just call them out rapid fire. It takes a little bit of time for them to recover. Especially if they've been out on screen for a long time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, each character has three assists that they can use once you pick them. And the assists that they actually use also determines what hyper arc they'll perform when you actually do the team hyper combo. But that'll come a little bit later in this lesson. Let's just go over the basics of the assist for now. Now again, if you want to just call out your assist instead of switching to that next character, all you have to do is just tap the button. So let's say with Chun-Li and end point, I tap R1 for assist 1, sorry, L1 for assist 1, and I call out Ryu, and he does the move that I assigned to him, which is the Tatsumaki, his hurricane kick. I hit R2 to call out assist to, and my secondary assist partner, Hagar, will do the assist I assigned to him, 
the spinning Larry. Much like the regular special moves when the characters do them, assists also have certain properties to them which have various uses for whatever situation you find yourself in. One of the good thing about assists though, sorry, one of the good things about assists is that so long as you aren't being hit, and so long as you aren't like, you know, knocked down or prone, you can basically call them out anytime. You can even call them out Okay, that's another time you can't call them. Then you're in the midst of a super jump and you're like off screen. But if you're just doing a normal jump and you can still see the ground, you can call in your assist to do their thing. Like so. Now, there is also a way to actually switch between characters when you're in the middle of an air combo, mind you. And that's referred to as a TAC, or Team Aerial Combo. Think back to how I think back to how I mentioned the chain combos back in the first lesson. Now, let's say with Chun Li, you go one, two, three, up, one, two, three. And you see how the opponent was bounced off the ground and Ryu comes in with a flying kick, right? If you are connecting with a chain combo in midair, hit any of the directional buttons and special or the launcher button, and it'll actually switch to the next character after, you know, launching your opponent in whichever direction you pressed. Left and right will always do a wall bounce, or knock them against the wall and bounce them off. Down will, of course, knock them down to the ground and have them bounce back up. Up will simply knock your opponent higher. Let me demonstrate for you. One, two, three. There's the up. Or the up exchange, in other words. One, two, three. And there's the side exchange, which bounces them off the wall. Let's get a better look at the bounce right here. One, two, three. Boom. Off the wall, the character comes in with an attack, sets them up. Now, if you, t if you pull it off right, if you can keep the chain combo going, you can actually switch all the way to your third character, but it won't let you... Sorry, it won't let you reset the lineup so that you switch back to the first character you were using. So let's say if I go Chun-Li to Ryu to Hagar, if I try and use the special button again, it'll immediately knock them down to the ground and basically end the aerial combo. So, I can't go from Hagar back to Chun-Li, as you'll see right here. One, two, three. One, two, three. If it connects. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cool. See what happened right there? I tried it again, but all it did was just knock them straight to the ground. Now, uh, back to Chun-Li. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Now, to cover a couple of things that I think I may have neglected to in the previous lesson, there are a few other commands that, you know, I guess you could call them a few other flavors that special moves can come in. Like I mentioned, there are, of course, the charge attacks, so like, say, if you hold down for a couple of seconds, or at least like a second and a half, then press up and kick, you do Chen Li's Ahem, sorry, press up and any of the attack buttons, and you do Chun Li's Spring Bird Kick. Now, another special move command that some characters have, like of course her and Super Scroll, is by mashing the attack buttons or rapid fire pressing the attack buttons. There you go. Lightning kick. Thousand leg burst, in other words. You get the idea. The Chun Li special. Feel me? But, anyway, let's get back to working with assists and teamwork. Probably one of the biggest, probably one of the biggest influences to a player's strategy when they're picking characters in Ultimate Marvel 3 is which assists they decide to pick with their character. 
So let me go ahead and switch in Ryu. Now, Ryu's your all-around character, right? You know, he's got decent mobility. But, however, he's not always the greatest with keeping an opponent pinned down. His when it comes to applying pressure, he's not all that good. But then if you call in Chun-Li, all of a sudden you've got that extra pressure right there. So if I just try to do the normal combo and call in Chun-Li in the middle of it, you see how she you see how she adds to it. Same if I try for a low combo. Normally the sweep would end the combo right there, they'd be knocked to the ground. But as you can see, I was actually able to follow up with a jumping combination and canceling the aerial special, thus ending the combo right there. So, I mean, again, everything that I'm going over in this lesson can be tied back into the previous lesson and the one before. Everything will flow together the more you practice with it. I mean, heck, if I wanted to, I could have even cancelled a super from that. So, normal chain while calling assist to special super. Or, low chain plus assist, standing chain. Or even aerial chain in the super. The point that I'm trying to make is this. If you know you've landed a hit, you can call out your assist to try and extend your combos. Now... Oh, excuse me. Before I do that, I also want to remind you that again, switching characters, also, switching characters, especially mid-air, is a good way to actually extend your combos and increase your damage. However, using the exchanges in mid-air is kind of like playing tic-tac-toe. Your opponent has a window of opportunity to where if they match your button press, if they press, say, up in special while you're trying to do a vertical exchange, down in special while you're trying to do a bounce exchange, or either one of the left and right buttons and special while you're trying to do a wall exchange, they will break your combo. And they will be put, basically, they will be put on better footing. They'll be put on the offensive. So you really want to be careful, much like with anything you do in this game, you want to be careful not to just throw it out at random. So I guess you could say in a way, Playing Marvel 3 is kind of like playing chess, in that you have to try and not only match your opponent's moves on the fly, but also try and modify your strategy so that you're still at least one to two moves ahead. Anyway, let's get to the next portion of Mastering the Art of the Assist. That would be the DHC, or Delayed Hyper Combo. Now, if you have enough meters on that bar below your feet, then you can actually cancel your current point character's hyper art with another. So for example, let's say I decide I want to start with a nice projectile, so I'll start with Ryu Shinku Haroke. Now, any time during that beam, I can cancel, I can basically cancel that by doing the command for one of my next character specials, so, say, doing the command for one of Chun-Li's Hyper Arts, and I call her in to continue the assault. Much like with the aerial exchanges, if you have the basically if you have the meter for all three supers, you can go from one right into the next until all three of your characters have had their turn. So, we can start with Ryu. 
move on to Chun Li, and then at the right time, call out Hagar. However, you can't loop from Hagar, or you can't loop from your third character back to your first. So again, there's no resetting the line. Now, since we're on the topic of, you know, teamwork that actually requires meter, we'll go into we'll go into the last of the of the most basic of assist uses, and that would be the team hyper combo. Using the default control setup, if you press both of the assist buttons together, or L1 and R1, or the left and right bumper together then you'll call out all three of your characters to actually do their supers all at once. But if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, there is also a default button for that using the standard control setup. And that would be L2, or the left trigger. Like so. Team Hyper Combos use three meters and the properties for every single super come into play, so if you keep mashing the buttons while all three are doing their attacks, you'll get more hits. Like so. Now, once you get more accustomed to actually doing combos, especially extended combos, then that 97 hits that was up on the screen, <coughs> it'll seem like a cakewalk. Alright, it'll seem like something that you might actually be able to do with just two characters, or maybe even one by himself. But, you know, that's going to be later on once you actually start picking up your skills. This is mostly just to help you get accustomed to the basics. Now, uh, speaking of the basics, this is something you are really going to need to watch out for. Remember how I mentioned that your assists take double damage if you try to call them out while you're in the middle of being attacked by your opponent? Or if you call them out and your opponent decides to just go full bore and rush you and you don't have anything prepared to respond? That's one instance where things could get bad. But the other instance where things could get really bad? Well, uh... This is what's known in the fighting game community as the happy birthday. Because if you've got more than one character on the screen and the other person is beating the tar out of both of you, it's like you've basically handed them a gift. Wrapped up, nice and neat, even with a little bow on top that says here, hit me! Thus, happy birthday. Let me go ahead and uh, turn on the CPU, so that way you'll get a uh, quick look at what I'm talking about. Come on. You are guilty. Notice Hagar's health. Notice how he only took one, maybe two hits, and he's already down that far. Ah, stupid ghost right? he seems like taking throws. And he seems like getting hit by my assists when I call them out. Come on, Ghost Rider, you know better than that. Stupid Ghost Rider. Stop that! That's it. Uh, it seems like the CPU doesn't quite want to do what I was expecting it to. But you get the basic idea. You know, it's going to be fast paced, and you are going to want to keep a very close eye on where you call your assists and how you do your assists. Now, another thing that's also, sorry, another assist-based maneuver that's also going to require a meter is the snapback. 
Now the snapback is a relatively underused technique. But it's one that if you play your cards right, you can actually control the pace of the fight. Because if you know what's going on with your opponent's team and how they plan on using them, you can disrupt their strategy by simply doing a quarter circle forward with any of the assist buttons and effectively snapping in a character that they were possibly trying to hold on to as their primary assist or as the character that they were going to use at the very last to try and make that comeback. So, not only knowing how your team is going to be set up or how your team synergy is going to play, but also how the other person's team is set up and basically calling in, basically forcing them to call in the opponent that you want to fight. Will make a pretty considerable difference. So, uh, I think that right there is actually going to do it for this entry into the Rookie's Field Guide. I mean, yeah, I have to admit, this one's rather short compared to the others. It might probably only hit 25 minutes, maybe less. But there's still a nice chunk that you're going to need to try and, you know, keep in mind, or at the other... or at the very least, you know, get in some practice with. So... Now that you've got that one character that you've practiced up with and that you've, for the most part, gotten down, see if you can find at least one more, maybe even two more, to round out your team. And then start working with them as far as just not only practicing their moves, but also getting used to calling them in as assists. Because if you put together the basics of mobility, defense, and offense, plus the basics of specials, and Hyper Arts, plus what you've picked up here with the basics of the Art of the Assist, then that is going to put you on solid footing for some of the more intermediate skills that you're going to want to learn once you, once you start playing Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. So with that stated, Class dismissed. This is Blazing Ace Nelson, signing off. I'll see you next time.